everybody. And thanks for giving me the chance to teach you something which actually I wish somebody told me when I was uh, at school, in the college, or, or you know, even in lifetime actually. And when I learned about that, I said definitely this is something I have to share with everybody. They need to know actually this magical thing, which you will see, I call it, after the name I learned it from Tony Busan, the most important graph in the world. Now it's Friday, I know that you're in a rush, we want to finish your time, so I'll try to make it as smooth and as memorable as possible. The whole point is, how do we remember things? You study for the exams, but let's say a couple of weeks or days even, down the road you forget like half of it, and you are frustrated, then you read again, and you're trying to remember. So the main fundamental question is, is how we remember, how we forget, and actually can we do something about it? <clears throat> When you think about it, we are managing our time, we are managing the relationships that we have, we are managing money, we are managing our exams, we are managing our education, pretty much a lot of things. But who is managing all this? It's our brain. So how do we manage the brain? That's the fundamental thing, is we need to understand how our brain functions, how we remember, how we forget, how we learn. So I will run a small test with you, you're not going to be graded on it. And you, you will see in application how this thing works. So I will give you a list of 30 or so words, don't try to write them down. Remember as many as you can, all right? So, but the most important thing is pay attention to what do you think, how you feel when you remember them, do you make any associations, how it makes it link to other things, try to pay attention to that. All right, so I'll start now. Every second or so, I'll tell you a new word. Try to remember as many as you can. Okay, so I start now. House. Floor. Wall. Glass. Ceiling. Roof. Sky. Tree. Sun. Road. Shoe, bus, watch, and the earth, back, rope, and the earth, Albert Einstein, color, coat. Orange, flower, and the of cat, dog, cane, finger, and scope. If you remember them all, you classify the 0.1% of the population that actually has, it's using memory techniques. But let's go through all these things that I just said and try to find out what did we remember and what we forgot. All right? So you're all familiar with uh, charts. If this is the time. And if this is what we remember or recall, Does anybody remember the first word? Yeah. Um, pretty much everybody remembers the first word. <laughs> we remember the second word. Or, or the third one. Or, the fourth. So, alright, learning begins somewhere here. Right? We pretty much all remember the first things that are said. Now, all other things being the same, we will always remember the first thing. Do you remember the first time you flown a plane? No. <laughs> well, probably you should try to experience it another time in maybe, maybe more uh, interesting way. Uh, do you remember your first date? Do you remember the first day at school? There are many firsts, and you will all remember them, believe it or not. Everybody has a first thing to remember. And you could say, so what? 
how is that useful to me when I learn? Well, think of it, children, for example, babies in particular, they have almost every second first thing is the first thing to eat an orange, the first thing to eat an apple. They have so many first things. That's why they're so fast learners. They always have first things. And how you can use that? Remember that the first thing that comes is the first thing that will stay with you. So making a first impression to the teacher. How you begin your essay. How you begin your answer. These are the things that they stick in the mind of the examiner, in your mind, in your friend's mind, parents, workers, co-workers, bosses, etc. So it's something which is very, very important for you to remember that the first thing is staying forever with the person that meets you. Now, in, in your lifetime, you will meet probably thousands of people, and there will be always this first encounter if you look next to each other, look at each other. I'm sure that you will recall the first time when you met that person. And how you make first impression is paramount, because you have no chance to make a second first impression. First impression is a first impression. Now, as we go with the, the list of words, you tend to forget. Do you remember the seventh word? The tenth? Okay, as you see here, things begin to become kind of a bit messy and we, and we forget. So this is basically this down part here as we go in time. Now let's go and skip and go to the end. Do you remember the last word? School. I'm sure you will not forget. So we are coming, do you remember the word before school? Never mind, you still remember the last word. <laughs> it is not much like at the beginning, as you see, the first impression really counts a lot. So, as you see, you're somewhere here. Now, what it is in between here is kind of a, a void. But let's try to find out actually if this is the beginning. We call it fancy effect. And this is the recency effect. The primary and recency effects are the beginning and the end of your study session. If you study at home, if you study at school, let's say you have uh, classes, uh, anything you begin and you end is considered to be primary and recency affecting you. Now, logically I can recommend, and actually you will see that by yourself, that if you go for hours on end and you study, let's say, two, three hours, I mean, you have only one primacy and one recency effect at the end. So you just remember the beginning of where you start to study and probably the end. But everything which is in between, it will be kind, as you see, of left behind. So it is important for you is when you study for your exams or anything, have as many as possible recency and primacy. Take breaks, basically. That's what it means. Uh, make intelligent breaks. Take a break of 10, 15 minutes, do something else, get back on what you have to study. Create this primacy and recency because these are the things that will stick. And when you have to do the exam, you will remember them. They will stay with you much longer than the rest of the information. Now, there is no any time element affecting this thing. It could be an hour, it could be a day, it could be a week, it could be a month. Primacy and recency, they have no time boundary. They work for any period of time. But of course, the shorter you make them, 30, 40 minutes, the more you will have recall on those beginning and ends. <laughs> Does anybody of you remember something strange in the middle? I said Albert Einstein? Yes. Do you remember that? Okay. This is called a von Restoff effect. It's something which is outstanding. You remember the same words here and there, left and right. And suddenly I said Albert Einstein, you said, oh, that's it. You see? And your imagination starts working because you immediately see the guy with his hair, and uh, probably trying to do MC's formula and like uh, your imagination starts working. So this is somewhere here where you saw this kind of a stuff. It's called von Restor effect. Back, I think, it was before the Second World War, there was a, a psychiatrist in Germany. It was she, von Restor that wanted to find out how we learn basically what we are doing now in, in, the, in the demonstration. 
but she was trying to do it in a more uh, organized way, more scientific way. So what she came about is that anything which is outstanding, you will remember it. You will remember the biggest, you will remember the smallest, you will remember the largest, the smallest, you will remember the tiniest, you will remember everything which is in the extreme. You will remember funny things, you will remember outrageous things, probably you will remember very serious things. But again, things that are in between, probably you will not pay much attention to them and they will kind of get lost. So it is important for you to create, when you do your study, do one rest of effects for yourself. You certainly all know uh, Apple, you know Apple? Yes. When, when Apple decided to make their iPod, uh, the team and the Steve Jobs, they said, let's keep the design very simple. We want to be even cleaner, so let's keep things white, and without all the accessories, the foam pads as well, let's, let's keep them white. Until that point, everybody had black headphones, and they unintentionally created this one restorative effect, because when you walk down the street, and you see somebody with white headphones, and you say, this guy is cool, because he has an iPod, immediately. So making these things when you do your study, it creates this kind of explosion, bang, and you remember it, it stays with you. So later on you will tell me something, maybe I will, I will kind of brainstorm with you just to give an example of what it means, but this is really, really powerful thing. It's like when you get it, it, it tends to stay with you forever. Similar to the primacy and to the recency. Do you remember certain things that I repeated? Yeah. Very good. Somewhere here, I, I repeated and D and F, right? So they were here somewhere like this, here, and almost at the end, I mentioned it again, like that. This is called the repetition and association. Now, you make different associations. It could be by repetition, it could be by visual images, and uh, it could be by anything that is personal to you. Visualization is, and imagination is very personal, so it's not something that you can learn. Kids do it. After that, we kind of tend to forget about it, and then maybe later on in life we remember about it. But visualization and imagination is it's critical for your study. When you do something, you have to try to make that relevant to you and to, to personalize it. Not a single teacher can make something uh, go in your head. You have to find uh, how this thing applies to you and how you can associate it with other things. You have to make some relevant things. So if you study geography, and let's say you study about France, try to think of French music if you like French music, or maybe the, if you visited France, try to, to link it with some of your visits that you made. So try to make it as personal as possible because this is what is going to make the information stick uh, in during exams and for a lifetime. Now, do you, does anybody remember glass? Yes. yes. Window? Yes. yes. No. Does anybody remember something else, maybe, in the middle? Tigers? So, cat and dog. Here are some of the cat, yes, that was also the <laughs> Here some of, uh, of the people, when they have done this thing, they remember different things. This is like, for example, they remember tiger, or they will say uh, a window, which is very convenient. I never said window, but it was uh, very conveniently arranged in the whole house setting. So here you have these things, which are called arrows. I never said them, but you remember them somehow. And I will give an example. There was uh, these two friends, they start talking to each other and the one said, you remember last year we went to uh, that country and we did this thing? And he said, yes, yes I did. And uh, do you remember then you did this and then I said that? And he said, yes, of course, and then you said this and then I said that and so and so and so and so. And he says, yes, I remember. And do you remember you said this? No, I don't remember. And how you don't remember? You said that. He said, no, I didn't. No, you said that. And it begins like an endless argument, which I'm sure that every one of us has heard that, where you try to, to persuade another person that something happened and actually it never happened. So this is the point about understanding and misunderstanding. 
But here the critical point, which I want you to take at home with you and during exams, that you have to look at the big picture, as you will see later. This is not the most important if somebody is right or if it is wrong. We are looking at the bigger potential of experiences and pain because some people experience things in one way, other people experience things in a different way. As I told you, there are people in different associations. For me, for example, one thing can mean something else and for another person, completely different things. So, a normal reaction will be, how fascinating, can you tell me something more about how you felt when we talked this last year? So the same thing with learning. You will associate and on the exams, you will probably have things to recall that actually you never, never, you know, just because they are conveniently arranged or maybe because they were misleading you in a way. Now this is not wrong as such. These things should be taken as a something which facilitates learning. You can, even from misunderstood things, you can remember things as you understood. So having things that did not exist actually it's sometimes useful because you make more connections and very interesting sometimes. Now, here somewhere almost towards the end probably you got the point. I mean you said this guy is trying to test us and see if we are going to forget pretty much the entire list. So this is the effect of having, it's called gestapt effect, when the sum of everything together is giving you the big picture, it's like a puzzle, let's say, you start putting all the pieces, you put a piece, 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 let's say when you put about half of the pieces, I mean, you're surely going to get the big picture and to say, aha, this is, this is what it is all about. And having all this, what is it all about, helps in the learning process because you see how everything relates. Let's say how geography relates to languages, to French or to German or to Spanish. How mathematics relates to different things. It could relate to literature, it could relate to art, how you mix paints and how you uh, do the different colors and, and things like that. So you see really the big picture. When you study for your exams, try to look beyond just the subject. Try to link it to the other things because the moment you start linking it to the other subjects, this is the moment you will just enforce everything together and it will stay, stay with you for, for much longer. You see the same thing similar to what is happening uh, here. And finally, uh, certainly some of you, if they said, I'm going to give my best and I'm going to remember as many, as, as many words as possible, they had an interest in the beginning. Maybe some of you were not interested. It doesn't matter. The point here is that interest is directly related to the outcome of your exams. If you have no interest, nothing will help. So this is the interest which is actually coming throughout the thing, which is supporting you to everything to keep this learning curve high. This is the interest. So starting with your exams, always think of what do I want to get from this exam? Have a purpose. Have some outcome that you want to achieve. The same thing, I'll give you a very applicable thing, for example, for essays, I'm sure that you'll be doing that quite a lot for assignments. Now, and you will see how this applies with, with everything together. But if you have an interest, and if you know to whom that it is addressed, then certainly you will have much better outcome than if you just write mm, for the sake of writing. Well, let's say you have no any desire whatsoever. Now, how this relates to, to your study? I will probably take something like an essay and just give you a, just a, a, a summary of what I said. So you have the essay, you will need to begin with something which is going to create ions. So when the teacher reads it, or anybody, he is going to say, this is going to stick with me forever. Probably he will not even think consciously, but it needs to be something interesting. If I came and I just told you, guys, the toilets are there, if there is a fire, you have to go through that door, and if you go there, and this and that. So this is pretty much how most conventional meetings go and presentation. I am certainly what are you going to remember? Where is the toilet and where is the fire exit? You see? So try to make this thing relevant to the teacher or the examiner and put it first. The first thing is remember first. What about the last? The last is the summary. So you normally summarize things and you try to make some long-lasting impression again. It's really no brainer. I'm sure that you, you already know how to do quite well. These things are probably maybe 
uh, common sense, but as you see, they can be applied in a different way so you can get the most of it during learning and, and exam time. <clears throat> the repetition here, you could say, I'm going to prepare for my uh, essay or for my assignment, and I'm going to divide the work into, let's say, parts. So I'm going to have maybe uh, 20 minutes today, 20 minutes later, and maybe 20 minutes in a couple of days down the road. So in that way, you will have the time not only of doing primacy and recencies, but you will be having the time of repeating things, going through them again, looking at the big picture, and making more associations. Now, when you do the essays, think of something that is going to be striking, like the Einstein. Well, like I told you, I created the brain uh, of one rest of effect by telling you about, about you remember who? About Steve Jobs and about Apple. Remember, you will remember that because it was really, it's like, you never thought of it as something new. So, uh, with, with that being said, I'll conclude a few, a few minutes for questions. <coughs> Uh, you know the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Well, it is not, it is for a reason apple a day. It's not seven apples on Sunday, and it's not 31 apples at the end of the month. It's an apple a day. So when you study, you need to be consistent. You need to take things fully and take them consistently to get the best result. But apply these things. It's, I'm sure that it will be useful not only in, uh, in study, but for a lifetime. So thank you.